welcome to another video. In this one, I want to show you how we can make a very simple Python multiplication game that we can play from our terminal. Let's get started. This is how the game works that we'll build in this video. I already have one coded up and I'll execute it now. The application will give us numbers that we need to multiply together. We can input an answer and if we get the answer right, we get to continue on the game. But if we get the answer wrong, then the game ends. As we progress through the game, the game gets more challenging and we get more numbers to multiply. And once we get an answer wrong, we get a final score and it tells us how long it took us to get to those points. So let's see how we can build this game in Python. There's a few packages that we'll need to use. So let's import the time package. We'll import func tools, import operator, import random, and then import math. Most of these are already built into Python. So depending on how you installed it, you should already have them. But if you don't, I'll have a few links in the description below to help you out. The first thing we need to do is to write the print statements that happen at the beginning of the game. We'll drop down and say print, and then we'll say number time quiz. Now let's use that time module. So we'll say time dot sleep, and we'll say to sleep for two seconds. This is just telling our Python script to wait two seconds before proceeding to the next line. Now we'll say print, answer the multiplication problems before time runs out. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll say time.sleep and then we'll pass in three seconds and now we'll have the final print statement. Ready? Go. Now at this point if we want to track the total time that the user plays the game we need to create a new variable. We'll say start time and this will be equal to time.time .time as a function. So essentially we're just using this as a timestamp to when the user begins the game. Next let's go ahead and create a variable. We'll say the score will start out as equal to zero. We'll assign this here. That way when the user gets a correct answer, we can go back and change the score later on. Now let's go ahead and make the game logic. We'll run this game inside a while loop. So we'll say while true. Let's go ahead and make a difficulty setting. So I'm not putting the option here to change this from the user perspective, but if you wanted to take the script farther, you definitely could. But here, let's just say difficulty setting is equal to two. We'll make another variable called difficulty progression. And what we need to do is to relate this to the score of the user. So as the score goes up, the difficulty of the game should also go up. I'll do this by using the math module. So I'll say math and then the function floor. The floor function just rounds down a number to the closest integer value. Now I'll take score and divide it by 10. This line is just increasing the difficulty as the score goes up. Now the overall difficulty overall difficulty will just be the summation of the difficulty setting plus the difficulty progression. What we want this to be is an integer value of the total number of numbers that the person has to multiply together to get the correct answer. Now let's go ahead and create the logic to get those numbers. We first need to make an empty list. So I'll say numbers list. This will just be our container for the numbers that we had to multiply together. Then we'll say 4x in range of the overall difficulty. So we'll pass that variable in. For every number of our difficulty, we want a random integer that we have to multiply together. We'll put a colon and drop down. And now we want a value to append to that list. So we'll say value is equal to random dot random int of a number one to nine. All we've done here is used a random package to return a random integer between one and nine. Once we get that value, what we need to do is to append it to this list. We can do that by saying numbers list dot append and then we'll pass in that value. But now that we have the logic to get the numbers, we need to know if the user is correct whenever they answer the multiplication problem. So that means that we need to know the answer so we can compare the user answer to the actual answer. We'll drop down and exit out of the for loop and say our answer will be equal to, we'll pass in the functional tool library and then we'll use the function reduce. This function takes multiple values and reduces them down to one value using whatever operation you specify. So let's say our operator is a multiplication operation. And we can do that by calling the operator package and using the function multiply. We'll pass in our numbers list. Let's say that we want to reduce this down to one value. So this line of code is just taking all the numbers in our numbers list and multiplying them together to give us an answer. Now let's tell the user what to do. So we'll say print multiply these numbers. We'll put a comma 
and then we'll pass in that numbers list variable, which will contain all the individual values that the user needs to multiply. Next, we need to give the user the ability to put in a guess. We can do this just by saying guess is equal to integer and then input from the user. The input from the user will by default be a string, so that's why we're casting it as an integer value. Now we need to make the logic for the game to understand if the answer is correct or incorrect. If guess is equal to answer, that means the user got the question right and we should provide another question for the user to answer. We already provide those questions because that logic is still within the while loop. But what we do need to do is to change the score value. So we'll say score is equal to score plus, and then we'll say one times overall difficulty. This way, the more difficult the question, the more points you get for answering correctly. We'll drop down and say continue. And now let's go ahead and make the else. So the else is if the guess is incorrect. In this case, we want to print the score and end the game. So let's say print game over the answer was, and then we'll pass in the answer. When the game ends, we also need to end the timer that we started in the beginning. We'll say elapsed time is equal to time dot time, so that function, minus the start time. This will give us the total time that we played the game. Now we'll drop down and say print your score was, and then we'll pass in the score, in only, and then we'll pass in that elapsed time. Lastly, as long as we're in the while loop, more questions will happen. So when the answer is wrong, we need to put a break statement so we break out of the while loop. We'll save this file and then open up a command prompt or a terminal to test out our game. So let's say python3 and then multiplication game dot pi. And we see that our game works. There's a lot more logic that we could put into the game, but for now, this is a simple introduction to the cool games that we can build with Python. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let me know. Until next time, 